Good day. In this lesson, we are going to review the history palette. Um, really can't believe I haven't done a lesson on the history palette before now, but there are so many things to talk about in Photoshop Elements. I seem like I will never cover them all. And so here is a, just a recent layout that I created. Um, using my template 88. I just have it open just so we have something um, out there to play with. And um, we're going to open the history palette by going to Windows and doing the uh, clicking on Undo History. And I believe in the full version of Photoshop it's just it might be just called History and here is the palette now it just like all of them we can pull them out and drag them around or you can dock it um, you know you can dock it in its own layer section like this one the effects is in its own um, the layers is in its own or you can group them and I would prefer to group it so I'm going to put it right over here and then I can switch back between effects and undo history and it keeps everything all nice and organized so you see here um, in the history palette I only have two things I have the original state each each step in uh, the history palette is called a state and so I have the original state and that we opened it so I'm gonna go ahead and do some things out here on my layout just some wacky things uh, let's do uh, create a new layer so you see we have created a new layer shows up in the history and I'm going to get the marquee tool and just draw out here now you can see it added rectangular marquee and I'm gonna hit alt backspace and I've filled that in with my foreground color so you see it says fill Control D to deselect those marching ants. So now it says deselect. Let's go get a brush tool. <coughs> um, these are my grunge brushes I still have in here. So let's change it to the foreground color to be a black. And I'm just going to stamp around here a little bit. And you can see each time I do that, it adds brush to the history palette. Now normally without the history palette if I wanted to go back in time I just hit the undo button. We're all addicted to the undo and the redo button but you see each time I do the undo and the re button, uh, redo button watch the history palette and you're going to see I hit undo and now this brush is still down here because if we wanted to redo it we'd hit redo and it'd go back down there undo undo so it makes active meaning just like when we are selecting the layers palette it makes active the current state uh, by making it a the darker color we can go back and forward so if you did not want to use the undo and the redo buttons you could just manually click out here and now you can see it was taken away and again out here and we can hit redo just by clicking out here so basically this undo history is the same as using these two buttons out here and that's why I often don't use it now let's say though I have run the same filter over and over and over and instead of clicking or I just wanted to delete all of my brush work and I wanted to do that more quickly than hitting undo, 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 undo. I can just go out here and click right here and it leaves just the first brush or right here to the deselect and it takes away all of them. So when you click directly on a line in the palette, it returns it to that state and grays out every state below it. 
And so if I wanted to get rid of my entire square and make it go back to when I first opened it, I can just click Open. Now let's say I change my mind. Oh, I didn't want to do that. I'm I'm going to go back to where I have my square. I can just click there. So you can jump around to states really fast. That is the advantage of the undo history. Um, and uh, that um, can be very, very handy at times uh, to do things quickly. Now, you can delete your history. Um, the really the only reason to delete the history either it well there might be two one your history is getting full and getting very confusing and there's some things in here um, you're not using like let's say I go and I click here again it you see it um, cr gets rid of all of that other state and um, and uh, starts over but see I can hit undo and it's still all gone uh, so let's say we've uh, gotten all these brush things out here okay and let's say we want to get rid of this section because it's getting too confusing I've gotten too many um, brush marks and things out there and I want to I should have turned off my Yahoo Messenger and I want to uh, delete a certain section of the state. I can right click and choose delete. Do I really want to delete the state brush tool? Yes. And you see it deletes there and everything underneath. So you need to be careful because that undo history does disappear. And I'm going to go turn off my Yahoo exit sign out so that doesn't happen again. Okay, so. Um, one more important thing to point out, um, you can go, we, we didn't know that this was here because it's been there all along, but we didn't pay attention to it. We have here a clear undo history. That is going to take us all the way back to this original state. Now if I wanted, I could click, just click right here and it takes us back to the original state or I can go here and clear undo history and it's going to make all of my history disappear so you sure you want to do this most of the time I don't but I'm going to click OK and it takes it all the way back to that it's the same thing as hitting the right click and deleting the history but once it's gone, it's gone. Now you saw also the clear uh, clipboard. So let's see if we can get something on our clipboard. I'm going to just select and then I'm going to go to edit copy. Now I have something on my clipboard. And let's say it's something really large and I have a low memory. Um, RAM and I want to clear my clipboard. Most people don't have this kind of problem anymore, but you can go in here after you've used your clipboard <coughs> contents and clear them and make them disappear. Uh, we don't use that very often because most of us have computers that run <coughs> really well. But here is the important, other important thing with it, the undo history. Go to edit preferences and I believe it's under performance. In our preferences we have here a history and cache. So this is important because it depends on how much RAM you have on your computer. And so if you have a good computer with lots of RAM you can really up this and you know you can put it I mean 200 would be more than enough probably um, and what this does now is currently I have it at 194 so it's going to save 194 steps and once it gets to that 195 it'll start replacing the one at the top that is if we have 
uh, enough RAM to handle that. It can go, I think, all the way up to a thousand. So you, I don't know why you would need to save a thousand steps, states. Uh, but you know the option is there so you can change this but be, remember that it does affect your um, <laughs> how your Photoshop elements performs it could start um, it could start freezing up on you um, here is the cache and if you read down here at the bottom it says maximum number of history states to retain whoops I don't know what the cache level specifically oh it says choose, it's used to improve redraw and histogram speed number of cached levels of image data used to improve screen redraw and histogram speed choose more cache letter levels for better speed or less cache levels for better quality changes will take effect the next time you start Photoshop elements so um, that's important to note don't just change this history state and expect it to um, work right away you need to restart your Photoshop elements um, so that is what the cache level does and the number of cached levels of image data to improve the screen redraw and histogram speed. So if you want better quality, you go low. It was, I think, set on a default of 6, so that's what I'm going to leave it on. And if you want um, better speed, then you'd up that. I'm just going to leave that on default. So uh, that is the history palette, and it's basically pretty easy. Um, we can let me pull this out so you can see it. Uh, we can also go here, and you have the delete history and clear undo history, um, or you have the undo um, and redo to tell you what it does here. You can hit undo and redo here which I have no idea why you'd want to click and come over here to do that when you've got the handy buttons up here and you're helping your content so there's not a whole lot in the flyout menu but you could dock that right in there and just keep it handy I like um, the other one I like to have in there is my adjustments because you see whenever you're doing layers and you do the new adjustment layer it puts this tab down here and your layers disappears and it freaks you out and it's really annoying it didn't used to do that in old versions of Photoshop elements just take that and grab it and put it up here and then you can see your layers and your adjustments at the same time and then quickly go back to something else to get rid of it and quickly see it again and that's usually where I like my adjustment layer so that's it for this video and I hope you understand the undo history and how easy it is to utilize